welcome. I hope you're going well. As you can see, I've done this little build. The kitchen's built, the rest needs to be done. But while we're doing so, we're gonna go through a bunch of building mode tips and tricks. And these are really, really great. So one thing you might wanna do before we get started is just head over to the camera controls in the top right of build mode. And under it, you'll see there's a Sims 4 camera and a Sims 3 camera. Click the Sims 3 camera because building with the Sims 3 camera enables some tips and tricks that don't work with the Sims 4 camera. Let's get into it. The first one is just a simple hotkey and that is to turn off the grid. As you build, you'll notice you have this grid over everything and it can sometimes make things a little bit tricky to see. Simply press G and it will toggle off and then press G again if you wish to toggle it on. It can be great just to give you a bit of clarity without having to go into play mode. So the next tip is to resize objects and I actually find this most useful with things like rugs. By pressing the open bracket key, you can make them smaller or alternatively by pressing the close bracket key, you can make them bigger. I know sometimes you wish there was a size in between the you know small and really big, but you gotta work with what you can work with. It's also really great for things like sculptures, but of course it can be used on absolutely any item. Simply click an item, find a sculpture that you like. Let's go with the little gnome. We're gonna get rid of it, but pop him down or you can just open bracket to make him small. Or if you wanna make him a really big gnome, you just keep pressing open bracket and of course he can just get ginormous. There's no limits to what this gnome can do or any item for that reason. Alrighty, it's time to talk about moving objects up and down. So I essentially wanna add this gnome to my garden, but essentially the game won't let me. The first thing you'll need to do is put the move underscore objects on cheat. So you do control shift C and type in BB dot move objects space on and I'll activate that treat. So the next thing you'll wanna do is grab your gnome. You'll see he'll be able to move into the plants. Once I grab him properly, moves in, and then I can just press control nine to raise him up and place him in there. Of course, I can also press control nine to make him go really high, or I can press control zero to bring him back down. Say if I just wanted his hat to be poking out. But no, we're gonna have our gnome sitting in our garden, so we're gonna place him right there. The next tip is really basic, so you might know it, but if you don't, it really comes in handy. Essentially, when placing an item, if you hold down the shift key, you'll be able to create a duplicate straight away, so you can create multiple at once. Also, side note, I never really understood this bookcase. It's both expensive and not that nice. So the next tip's a really easy one, but it does come in handy. Essentially, when you have different surfaces, they'll have spots on them that items can snap into. Rather than try and find these surfaces, you can always just press the M key and that will see the item just lock into the different ones and cycle through all the options. And then you can pick whichever one you want. All right, so the next one's a bit of a four in one and it's all about moving and rotating objects. So you'll see I have this TV stand here and it's kind of locking into the quarter grid. What you can do is you can press function and F5 and what that will do is that will give it a little spot in between. So essentially you're doubling your grid placement and where you can move the item. Now we can go one step further. By holding down the ALT key, you essentially get free reign over where you place the item and total free movement with no grid locking. Now, you can rotate objects by pressing the comma or the full stop key, which will make them go clockwise or counterclockwise. But what you can also do is when placing and press ALT for free movement, when you place it down, by holding ALT and then rotating your mouse, you can then choose and then place it in any way you want and kind of get free movement there as well. Of course, that's great for changing setups and layouts of entire spaces and gives you a lot of new options when it comes to building. All right, the next tip is with flooring. And you'll notice that here I am trying to place square tiles, but over here I've got these cool little diamond shaped tiles. So what you can do is you can press Control F and that will change your tiles to be quarters. And then you can use that to create different patterns, shapes, whatever you like to give your flooring some unique feel to it. So I've just done this here in the dining section to give it a center. Alrighty, I'm just gonna toggle that off. And then another thing you can do is that instead of clicking and dragging to make a floor, you can simply hold down shift and that'll simply cover the whole floor space. And of course, if you put in some special tiles, it won't override them, which is really great and really handy. Alrighty, our final tip is to do with wallpaper and don't judge the dining table and chairs I put in, I know they are far from perfect. So, of course, you have your wall and one thing that's great to know is that you can do the exact same thing with your flooring to your wallpaper. Meaning if you press shift, it'll do the whole room rather than having to click and drag. 
Another great thing to know is that if you just wanted to do one wall, you can use Alt. So simply press Alt and it'll just do one wall rather than a whole room in case you wanted to have a nice feature wall with an artwork. Thank you so much for watching. Alas, I hope you found that helpful. If you liked it, please subscribe and leave a like. I would really appreciate it and have an amazing day. I'll see you later.